A. Teresa. Oh, let's see. Let me get more. Hey, Miss Miranda. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I'll keep it on that. So if she was down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good morning, Kareem. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We thank you for your anointing that we already uh, feel in the atmosphere. That we can't do nothing. Mm. Whew. Can't do nothing without your presence. And who don't want to do it without your presence because when your anointing is here it comes to deliver it comes to set free it comes to change lives this is all about changing lives father we thank you that you're in our atmosphere and the atmosphere of our homes the atmosphere of our jobs those is working i thank you right now that you're doing what needs to be done today that this will not only be a prayer and a word to be a transformation in someone's life. Someone's life is extinct right now, God, and they need you right now. So, God, I thank you for the ministry that's coming alive that's down on the inside of us. We just ask you just to have your way and let your will be done. God, fill the rooms mm, of my spirit and our souls. Father, we just want to please you and we just want to do your will and whatever you want done, that's what we want, God. So, Father, we thank you right now. The power of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost is in our midst right now. So, Father, we thank you right now because we love you so much. We ask you to have your way and do whatever needs to be done. Cleanse us, God. Transform our mind. Change the way we think and operate, God. Fill us up to the overflow, God. Continue to do the work that you've begun in us, God, before the foundation of the world. So right now, in Jesus' name, let us feel your presence in this atmosphere. Let us feel change in this atmosphere. Let us feel an anointing in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everybody. I already, I already feel this anointing in this atmosphere. Hope you feel them too. <laughs> I pray that you're having a good morning. I'm not going to be on here long. That's my goal. <laughs> I say it every time. <laughs> that is my goal. I'm not going to be on here long. But I want to talk about something that hinders us from um, walking in that place God has called us to because every time we get on we try to add on uh, something uh, you know something's going to help us to get to that point a place where God has called us to and hopefully that these nuggets are, are um, is getting you closer to be uh, feeling free and delivered the bondages that the devil tries to yoke you with you're getting closer to feeling free closer to that place where God can really use us. And I, I want to read the scripture, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that prove what is that good and accept the perfect will of God by the renewing of our mind we are a spirit a soul that lives in a body and the soul 
it's a diagram. I wish I could just put this on Facebook. The diagram is showing uh, this, the soul. What the soul is is your mind, it's your emotions, and it talks about um, what the soul is and how it interferes with your body, which it causes infirmity and pain. And that's where the, the, the soul part is where you have the strongholds and the, the addictions and things like that. Because when you're saved, your spirit is already renewed, but your, your soul and your body is not renewed. Come on. And he says, be ye transformed. So he's telling you that because of you, you accept salvation, you accept Lord, the Lord as your Savior, your spirit is instantly transformed. But then you have to read the word and you have to do everything it takes to get your body and your uh, soul transformed, which is your mind, your emotions, and, and um, I mean, your thinking and all that stuff, was, which causes um, when the enemy attacks you, he attacks your mind. And he knows that's where your soul is and that's where the... the um, the, the things that you go through and and um, pretty much your mind starts all the the um, imperfections and things that God you know don't want you to think about and don't want you to do before we get started I want to show you a list of strongholds strongholds is something that that I try to see if there was a difference between strongholds and addiction and they almost walk hand in hand because it's something that God that's holding you that's really strong it's something you cannot break through uh, it's something the devil does, and, and it's really, he attacks your body, he attacks your, he tries to attack your soul, he attacks your body, and cause you, when people are addicted to drugs and alcohol, that's an attack to the body. Uh, it's really a mindset of, you know, the devil is letting you think your body needs something, it craves for something. But I have a list right here of some of the addictions are stronghold. It says addictions are stronghold. That means they're, they're kind of putting them together. Uh, and I was trying to see if there was a separation between addicted to, addicted to something or having a stronghold. But they kind of, they put them together because if you're addicted to something, it's a stronghold that you can't get loose. Uh, it's something that holds you at bay. And the devil, he keeps you locked in and you feel you can't be free because your body's always um, always craving for something. And sometimes it's not something that's entering your body, it's something from the outside. And um, they have a, a list of strongholds and addictions that sometimes we don't think about because all most of the time we think about stronghold as being, oh, they're addicted to drugs, oh, they're addicted to, to um, uh, alcohol, are they addicted to sex, are they addicted to something um, that we can tangible see, but we find it out that strongholds can be, and the first one they put on here at the top of the line is movies and television. And something that sucks you in, and something you crave, and that's what we call series. It's amazing, when I, when I uh, printed this out, movies and television is the first thing they put on as strongholds and addiction. It's something that keeps your mind. I think that's one of the biggest ones because everybody has at least two or three televisions in their homes. And it's something that the devil keeps you, uh, the old folks say, glued to the television. And that's why they cause series. It cause you to keep coming back and keep coming back. And a stronghold is something that when you're trying to get rid of it, and you think you're okay, and you've been through a whole good service, you've been through a fast, and you've been through a prayer, and, and you feel yourself as being delivered, but the devil is still holding on, and you haven't got totally free. And then you find yourself vacillating back to the same thing, or, or what Paul says, I'm wrestling back and forth against my spirit, against my, my flesh. And it's something that keeps on pushing me back into the place that I thought I was delivered from and set free from. A stronghold. It's a strong grip. It's something the devil don't want to let you go. And it's something that the Bible says, present your body as deliverance. He told you to present your body, that you give it over to him. Come on and allow him to do what he needs to do in your body. Present your body as a living sacrifice. It means giving up all that stuff that your body is trying to crave and everything the devil is trying to push you. Now a lot of we're talking about, we're talking about Christians. It's something because in the uh, in your first salvation stage, your spirit is already re renewed and already ready to go. But your soul and your body has to catch up with the spirit. Well, how does the soul and body catch up with spirit? And then we're going to name some more strongholds in a few minutes. Uh, it says, uh, let's see, let's see. So, no, no. Spirit is an instant, but spiritual growth is determined by how much your soul has been changed by the word of God. 
Now, the only way when you receive salvation, you have to have the word of God down on the inside. That's what feeds your spirit, feeds your soul, and it feeds your body, and it causes your transformation. Sometimes transformation can be an instant. I know God is able to deliver you at an instant, and sometimes there's times he can do that. But there's times he takes you through a process, and he takes you because a lot of times he allows us to, now listen carefully, a lot of times he allows us to continue to go through so he can strengthen your faith, that you have something that can cause your muscles to grow. If God was to keep taking you out of everything, at an instant, then your muscles would not grow, and, and the devil can use that to put yourself back in your situation. Because if you got if you process yourself out, it's, it's easy to find out what you did, and you can kind of keep uh, uh, keep note or keep up uh, or keep a watch on how you your process went. Most folks uh, have a diary or some, some kind of thing; they write it down, and uh, and it's it. You know, you can mark your territory and you can mark what happened and how God got you through it. But if you get delivered at an instant, and sometimes there, there, there's times you can be delivered at an instant, but the process of your, your soul and your body understanding the process. So you, you have to catch up with your spirit. Your spirit is already renewed, but you have to catch up with the spirit. And what you have to do is feed your spirit so your spirit can be the one in control. And uh, a lot of times we don't realize we have strongholds. And we're wondering why we're not growing and we're in the same place we are. Because when we receive salvation, most of the time, everybody tell you everything's okay. You know, you receive the Lord as your personal Savior. Oh, everything going to be peaches and cream and walking through the tube lips. But I come to tell you, that's when the devil starts attacking your mind and causing you slow. That's what the Bible says, to lay aside every weight and every sin and everything that is beset you. Because when you indulge in just a weight, a weight becomes piled up and it becomes a sin. And that's why when you first receive salvation, you have to watch everything that you do. You got to make sure you're consistent in going to church. You got to make sure that you're consistent around Christians. It says you can be hindered by your soul. It's when you receive salvation because your soul is your emotion, it's your mind, it's your thinking. It's, it's pretty much the process part of your body. Uh, uh, the devil uses that, come on, to tell you this is what your body wants and this is what your body needs. And, and, uh, and um, it'll have you, the Bible says, be ye uh, 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 not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you're able to prove what is good, that is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And what he does is he try to get to the mind because when you uh, receive your salvation, the first thing that, that your pastor or whoever led you to Christ, you tell, now you need to read the word. We always go every day. I, I quote this scripture every day, Joshua, when he says meditate on the word day and night because it feeds your soul, it feeds your mind and it causes the devil not to be able to attack you it's like the helmet of salvation is guarding your mind come on so your mind can lock up with your spirit it says your body is just an earth suit and whatever you do with your with your soul and and, and um and the, what the soul does to your mind and your emotions, it causes pain to your body. Your body is just a suit that houses your spirit soul. Come on. And it can't attack your body when you feel pain and when you feel infirmity. And the devil can attack you with infirmity, which causes your body. And it can mess up your mental capacity. And a lot of times we go through depression and we go through oppression and we go through worry, go through fear. And it attacks our body with, and it causes infirmity and sickness to attack us. That's why you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The world will make you think that God is a liar. That's another thing the devil does to, to cause a stronghold, to make you think I'm never going to be delivered, I'm never going to be set free, that I'm always going to be like this. And it causes the more that you, you come against your uh, what the Spirit is wanting to do, the more the devil uh, uh, give you lies and cause you to believe uh, into lies and cause you to think that you will never be delivered and set free, where it's a stage of causing your stronghold to be even stronger.
And what you got to do is read the word and, and, and fast and pray and seek God that he would do something down on the inside. There was something else that I wanted to read that I, I, uh, I read this morning. Okay, when you become, when we become born again Christians, normally no change take place in our soul and in our body. Now I said a word right there. When you are born again Christian, normally there's no change in your soul, in your body. If you have a broken leg, when you, once you get saved, you still have a broken leg unless we cause and pray for healing for your body. <laughs> okay, let's keep on going with this because I love the way they wrote this. Um, you still have, let's see, if you had a broken leg before you were born again, you still have it afterwards. If you have diabetic, diabetes before you were born again, you should have it afterwards. If you had a fear, all this stuff you're still going to have. When you receive God, your perfect Savior, and He comes into your life, you still have a soul. Your soul does not, your soul, oh my God, your soul is still there uh, fighting against the Spirit. That's what Paul said, I'm warring against the Spirit. I'm warring. There's something inside of me that causes me to keep on wanting to do evil. When I, evil, when, when I want to do good, evil is always present. You, the soul part is a process. The soul doesn't know that you're saved. The, the body does not know that you're saved. And God has to heal your emotion. And God has to, to cause your spirit to override your soul. But the only way you can do that is by seeking God. And the word, my God. Come on, the word is what causes, the washing of the word was causes your mind to be renewed. And the only way the strongholds are going to be loosened from your body, from your mind, from your emotion, which is your soul, the only way is you keep on. You got to be consistent with it. Come on, you cannot leave a gap. You cannot leave a day without God. Come on, washing you and cleansing you and, and, and praying, God, I need your help. Come on, I need, and listen, accountability. We go back to accountability. Come on, to help your soul, to not to want to crave for things and not wanting things to, to uh, please your body and please your, come on, your, your, um, Please your mind. You don't want that 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 thing to, to, to become a stronghold. Come on, it can't become. But when you first get saved, I'm telling you, if TV is your your main one, movies, television addiction, procrastination, there's food addictions. Come on, there's all kind of things that the devil will put in front of you and make it look good. Anything you have too much of become a weight or a stronghold and something that keeps you from actually getting to the place God's called you to. Now, some of these um, strongholds that they mentioned on here, I didn't ever think it was a stronghold. Come on. Pain relievers, mood, alternative drugs, uh, some people even get addicted to vitamins. Um, they get addicted to who's addicted to coffee. Just raise your hand. Just put your hand up there. These are addictions that your body feels like it have to have. Come on. It's the sugar. It's the, it's the sweets. It's the candy. Anything that your body craves and feel like it has to have. And most other things are not good for you. These are your soul. Your soul is trying to take over. Your soul is trying to say you got to have this. And, and come on, you're, you have mood. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you have mood changes, and and then you have you bored, and then uh, you 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 adopt things that uh, help you cope. It's all these things that is in the soul is causing you to deviate from what God has called you to. Anytime your flesh, and I always say, if you can't do something at least for three months, come on, you having whoop draws, and, and you wonder what this is going on, and, and you feel that you can't make it for three months, then I call, I'll tell you that it is a stronghold, or there is an addiction that's going on inside of your soul, come on. And we're talking about Christians. We're not talking about sinners right now, and it will keep you from growing in the place that God has called you to. They're talking about sugar. They're talking about sleeping late, hiding from life, you know. Uh, you make a decision to sleep all day because of depression. Who all addicted to chocolate? It's, uh, staying up late, a session of staying up late. Uh, some people have a reading a session. Now, there's never a, a reading a session is never bad when you're reading the Bible. So we won't talk. We won't put that on alcoholic. 
Uh, some people exercise too much. When it comes to excessive exercising, really all the stuff that they name in uh, here is a good thing, come on, that you can do. But anything that's over the top of over session or overdoing too much that keeps you from the word of God, that keeps your mind, come on, where you can't concentrate on the word. All these things keep you from concentrating on the word. All these things will keep your mind uh, off of what God wants to do down on the inside side of you. All these things are keeping you come on, occupied. Uh, it's keeping you from hearing the voice of God. It's, it's keeping you, oh my God, they're talking about, uh, oh my God, that, that, that's, that, um, Things that trans generational curse that transform your uh, transfers from your father, that transfers from your mother. A lot of if you do research and talk to your mother and father, you'll find out that some of your addictions or some of your strongholds are the same as your father and your mother's strongholds. Come on, things pass from generation to generation, and it the enemy uses these things, and he knows what uh, had your father and mother at bay. He knows what had your grandmother. Come on. And what it does, it passed down to you, and then it passed down into your children. And what it does, the devil wants your mind to stay polluted. He don't want your mind to be strong. He don't want your mind to be powerful. The mind is a powerful thing. But once the devil get a hold to it, oh my God, he it becomes a stronghold. He won't let your mind loose. And this is where you have to be delivered and set free. Your mind has to be renewed by the washing of the word. This is where the devil start discouragement and make you start wanting to give up. Come on. There are some things and vision that God has told you to do, but you become discouraged because your mind is not renewed. Now, God is a perfect gentleman. He gives us a choice, and you can make a choice if you want to change right now. Now, here's an example of wanting to be changed. I, listen, I'm talking to my pastor. I'm talking to a mentor. I'm going through something and there's, there is no pride there. And I'm allowing them to know that I'm dealing with the situation and I need help right now because if I'm doing it by myself, I will not stop. The best thing to do is snitch on the enemy and stop having pride and keeping your addiction or stronghold and keeping it down on the inside and think that you can handle it by yourself. That's the first thing the devil wants you to do. He wants you to keep it as a secret. Y'all write that down. The devil wants it, you to keep it as a secret because you embarrassed. You embarrassed because you're craving this. You embarrassed because you need this. You embarrassed because your body has needs. You embarrassed because your emotions is all over the place. You embarrassed because you're a pastor. You embarrassed because you're a leader. You embarrassed because you're a prophet. You embarrassed because you feel I should have overcame it. This thing should not be taking a hold of me but some kind of way you have left a door open and allowed the enemy to come in in your transformation in your salvation stage is when the devil starts working you can say i've been saved for about 15 years but in the 15 years if you have not been washed in the word or doing everything you're supposed to do in those 15 years the devil been stacking he's been stacking brick by brick he been stacking. He been stacking. It didn't start as a stronghold. It didn't start as an addiction. But you've been dabbing a little bit of time. Come on, we dabble. We, we you know, we 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 trying to we vacillate. Are we we try to be in between, you know, and trying to be saved. And, and at the same time, we want the world at the same time. Well, in the process of these doors are being open, the devil is coming in and he's stacking things. And listen, and he side swipe you. Come on. Things are coming in and you don't even realize it. You wonder after being saved for 15 years, you wonder why it's harder to function. It's harder to pray. It's hard to do God's will because at the same time, you was not alert. The enemy, enemy was coming in and you was not aware of it because you're not in prayer of the word or in consecration to know when the devil is coming. The Bible says that the devil
devil will not can't come up on you unaware. Come on. But the only way he can't come up on you unaware is if you are aware. And if you are seeking God with all that you have, and you're making sure that you are writing down things that you're finding yourself uh, 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 going to over and over as a coping mechanism. Coping mechanisms are sinful things and ways that stand in your way because you own. You shouldn't even have a coping mechanism when you with that Christ and you got the word. I know that's powerful. A lot of us use coping mechanism in marriages. Come on, we get bored and we try to find something to do. And the devil knows that you're bored. Being bored is a door opening to your spirit. Come on. It's a door open to your temple and it attacks you down on the inside. When you're bored, your mind starts wondering and trying to figure out what can I do to fit, to, to, to fill this void down on the inside. And when your mind is not on Christ, and come on, come on, either your mind going to be on Christ or it's going to be on the enemy. And if your mind's not on Christ, then there's a door opening and you're welcoming the devil into your mind yes you are saved your spirit is intact but your soul is still fighting a battle your soul is still wanting what is want your soul still has your emotions all over the place Woo! come on it says um it is so many things in here that's addictive that I really didn't know. People are addicted to gossiping and talking too much. You ever see hear somebody that uh, they're talking and and it energizes them when they when they want to hear the scoop of what's going on and, and the secrets and the lies and and hearing something about somebody else. It's like they're addicted to to someone else's life. Come on, because they don't have a life of their own. That's an addiction when you start gossiping about somebody else, and that lets me know that you ain't praying, you're not seeking God because you all in someone else's business. That's what gossip is. You get a, a high off. Of talking to somebody else. You get a high of hearing juicy stories. That's a demon down on the inside that's causing your soul, come on God, to miss out on what God's wanting to do down on the inside. It goes to pornographic movies. It goes to uh, jealousy. It goes to secret, I mean, secret things you're doing and you're not telling anybody. It's so many things that the devil tries to to cause you to have a stronghold. You ever had a stronghold on you and you couldn't get loose? Come on. And, and you're dealing with it all by yourself. And then the devil starts condemnation and cause you to feel like, come on, that you are a loser. Cause you to feel like that God doesn't love you no more. And causes you to, to a mind frame of wanting to give up. Mm. He get it if I see a little more shot tired. Who I feel is anointing. Ah. Cause you to want to give up and throw in a towel and his lies step come, start coming into your soul and causing you to feel that God don't love you no more because you done messed up. Come on. I come to tell you that you can be free and you can be delivered but snitch on the enemy and do not keep it a secret. Come on, go to your nearest pastor. <laughs> Woo. Go to your nearest pastor, go to your wife, go to your husband and make up your mind. Even though your body is still craving and your mind is still trying to cope, go find someone you can talk to. Do not deal with this by yourself because you can't handle it by yourself. You need somebody that can pray with you. You need somebody that can hold you accountable. You need somebody that can say, listen, did you read the word today? Did you pray today? Come on, you need somebody that can give you scriptures that you can meditate on it day and night. Why did Joshua say meditate on the word day and night? Because the word is your food. It feeds your soul. It'll start healing you on the inside. Come on. Your transformation will start by feeding. Oh my God. Feeding your spirit feeding. Oh my God. The devil cannot stay where there's a powerful word of God. The devil cannot stay where there's an anointing. Oh my God. The devil cannot stay if you keep your atmosphere with worship and praise. Oh my God. I feel God in this place. We're talking about Christians. 
We're talking about prophets and apostles. We're not talking about sinners right now because the devil's on your trail and he don't want the ministry down on the inside to grow. He doesn't want it to mature. So he's going to keep sending things. He's going to send an opportunity. And if you open that door, he's going to come in. Oh, my God, my God. It says stronghold is often starts with a wound we experience, a hurt, disappointment that makes our heart fertile ground for seeds of lies to be planted. On this foundation, the enemy then begins to build by brick by brick a wall of lies, ideas about the person of God, interpretation of scriptures, prideful thoughts. I mean, he starts all kinds of things. When you open the door, this is how strong world whole starts. It starts when you're going through something. You can be doing so well and, and you can be, you know, oh, you feel you okay. Come on. But all of a sudden, soon as disappointment comes, all of a sudden, oh my God, soon as you experience hurt, as soon as something happens, or you cannot have your way, or you in a marriage and the wife ain't doing what she's supposed to do, or the husband ain't doing what they're supposed to do, first thing you do is give up versus praying and cover them by the blood. It's, oh my God, we go into a stupor, back to a coping mechanism, which opens the door. Come on, come on, for marital issues and marital problems. Come on, we want to hide behind things. We cower out and we just don't face the issue and deal with the issue. Come on, man up, woman up, come on, and say, listen, I have a work that God wants to do down inside of me. So devil, you a liar. You have no place inside of me. Come on, that I got too much potential down on the inside to allow you to cause me for a setback. Come on, cause me not to move in the power that he has put down on the inside of me. I have the Holy Spirit down on the inside of me. He's my comforter. He speaks to me. He tells me what I need to do. And sometimes we ignore the power of the Holy Ghost that's down on the inside. He's constantly wooing us and don't do this. Stop doing this. Don't do this. You don't need to do this. Come on. You ain't ready yet. Come on. But we think we know everything. We think we have it under control. But we don't have it under control. Don't be embarrassed to say you have a stronghold. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed to say you have an addiction. Don't be embarrassed. It don't mean that you are weak, saint. It don't mean that you are the point at that point you are weak. But don't mean that you are a weak saint. We all go through things at different times. Come on, we all fight in this fight. Paul, oh my God, you would think, you know, that Paul wouldn't have that fight like he, the, the, the fight that he had to fight. But he said that always a war going on is always come on against good and evil. But then he tells you the things that you have to do. Come on. We know the word of God. We should not be in a predicament that we in. But what we do is we shut the word of God down so we can please our flesh. So we can please our soul. Come on. We got the word of God right here in front of us. God of us. We read it. Come on. But we're not listening to it. We, we read it. But we're not doers of what the word says. We read it. And it become a cliche. We don't quote the word of God so much that it has no meaning to you. Oh my God. And this is where the devil comes in. You keep opening those doors. You, you keep allowing the devil to spoil your goods. Come on. You keep opening the door. And once the door is open, he will get to your mind. And that's when all hell breaks loose. And that's when it gets to the point of a stronghold where you in a predicament and you cannot get out. Woo, my God, my God, my God, my God. That's where we need God down on the inside and this is where we got you know i think every day i think every single day we need to ask god to forgive us even in your addiction even with what you're going through let's say your addiction is playing video games why are you playing the video game? Because you feel you cannot stop. If something's wooing you towards that game. In your mind, come on, meditate on a scripture. 
while you're playing the video games, meditate on the scripture. Because if you don't play the video game, then your mind is not going to want to meditate on the scripture. While you're drinking that alcohol, meditate on a scripture. Saying, I'm not going to always be like this. Because the Lord is down on the inside of me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. While you're smoking that cigarette, you come on, tell, tell, tell the devil he's a liar. I may be smoking today, but I'm not going to be smoking tomorrow. Why are you addicted to your television show? Meditate on the word in the back of your mind. Eventually, the word is going to wash your mind. It's going to cleanse you. Come on. I'm not telling you to stop doing it because you stop doing it at that moment. Your body going to always be thinking about it. You still go, come on. Oh my God. But why are you in the midst of doing it? That's when you need to have the word of God. That's when, why in the midst of it? Why are you at the point of smoking that weed? Why are you at the point of getting high? Come on. Be prepared for it. You know you're going to do it. Get your scriptures ready. I'm doing it now, but I'm not going to be doing it long. And you will find yourself doing it less and less every time. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ, you telling me I can be high? I'm not telling. If there's an addiction you have, do it while reading the word. Do it while meditating. Do it while you're fasting. Come on, come on. Eventually, come on. The Holy Spirit, the Word of God is washing your words every single time. This is how you get rid of a stronghold. By the craving, it's overtaking you. You fall for the craving, but at the same time, you got a word in your spirit. At the same time, I'm taking it down brick by brick. I may not have all the bricks down. I may take a brick down one by one, but I'm going to kill this spirit. Come on. I may be smoking right now, but I'm going to kill this spirit. I may be having watching pornographic movies right now, but I'm going to kill this spirit brick by brick by brick. I'd rather you to take a one brick at a time than try to deal with the whole matter. Come on. Oh, my God. Because it can be frustrating. It can be disappointing. But if you just come on, come on, do a little bit of time. Come on, come on. Hit it in my son and my And make sure that you have accountability that someone is giving you the word of God. Come on, you can call somebody up. Like, listen, I, I messed up. I'm smoking a weed. I'm smoking weed right now. I'm messed up. I, I, I'm on cocaine right now. I'm even high as I speak. But give me a word. Come on. You got to help me. I don't want to do this. Come on. When I want to do good, evil is always present with me. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. One thing I like about the Lord, every when you're trying to do the best you can, <laughs> and the tap gets so overwhelming, Father, come on, I messed up again, but forgive me. Father, I messed up again, but forgive me. My intention is not to mess up, but I did it again. Come on, God is just, and he is willing and able, and he will forgive you of your sins. Come on. It wasn't willfully. Come on. It's that I'm trying, but the stronghold got me in a grip. And I can't seem to get loose out of my sight. This is where, well, I might as well just go ahead. I might as well just go back in the world because I'm doing it anyway. No, no, stay safe. But do it with the word of God. Do it with God's and God forgive you every time. Come on, just keep on, keep on, keep on. Don't be up. That's what the lies and the trick of the enemy is you done messed up. God don't like you. You done messed up. Look at you, repenting every time. Don't. Listen to what the devil tells you. You do what you know to do. Come on. I'm going to keep on moving. I'm not going to be discouraged. I know I'm not going to always be like this. But I'm here that the word says. This is the word says containing to my situation. I know, come on, that the word is about to work. I know that every time I read it, that he's knocking a brick off. A brick. Come on, come on, come on. A brick. That there's change coming down on the inside of you. Oh, my God, my God, my God. What else? Every human being has God-given gifts called a free will. And we all have a right to choose or think on our own. No one can take that from us, including Satan himself. Therefore, Satan knows he cannot possess us or take total control. We have seen, uh, you know, he, 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 he knows he can't take, for, for a child of God, he can't take total control. 
Because the spirit on the inside, come on, come on, you already repented. Come on, come on, you have the salvation down on the inside. The spirit has its spot, and the devil knows he can't take that away. Come on. But he's going to try everything. Come on. He's going to try everything to cause your soul, come on, to stay at a place where you're not pleasing God. To stay at a place where your mind won't be renewed. He's going to try everything. And we got to stop falling for what the devil, come on, tries to bring to our door. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing. Come on, the transformation starts by the word of God. That's where the transformation starts. It's a process. You're being processed out. And that's why some people, when they get saved, they backslide. Because when they get saved, they slip and mess up. But no one never told them that their soul is a process. Your flesh is a process. You got to process yourself out. You're still saved, but you need to be consistent in the word and consistent and, and, and going to church, consistent, being around somebody that can help you, consistent. Don't get discouraged and stop because you didn't get delivered all at once. Don't be, oh my God, don't let the devil confuse you. Come on, you're still safe. You're still striving for perfection. That you still a work that need to be still worked on. Come on. You're still not there yet. But God is helping you every time you come to church. Every time you read the word. I feel deliverance on this platform right now. I don't know if you have a stronghold. I don't know if you're dealing with anything right now. And I don't even know what you're going through. But the anointing just don't come just to come. But it comes to deliver you. It comes to set you free. And it's coming to make you whole. I feel the power of God in this place. I know that about stop you. The devil is afraid of you knowing the truth. He wants you to stay in discouragement. He wants you to keep on running. You got to stop running. You got to stop running and allow God to finish you. He begun to work down on the inside. And what he's do is doing, he wants you, come on, come on. He wants you to finish the work that he's got started inside of you. Come on. Don't wimp out. Come on. Don't wimp out. Just do what it takes to be free. You need to be delivered. You need to be set free. And you don't even have to wait to go to church. There's self-deliverance you can do. The process I get, gave you, that's self-deliverance. That's let the enemy know. It don't matter what you try to do. I'm going to put the word on it. I'm going to put the word on top of it. And until I get to the deliverance service, come on. I'm going to do what I need to do. I have a choice. I have a choice. Like I can either be free or I can still be bound. I have a choice. Let's talk, stop talking about what the devil's doing. Let's talk about how can I get free to what the devil's doing. Come on. If I'm saying the devil's doing something, what am I doing? Come on. Come on. To try to, okay, there is a plan. There's a, there's a, there, there's a walking out stage. Come on. There's some research. There are some scriptures I need to research and find about my situation. Why am I here lying here dying? Why am I here lying here going through when God has gave me a, a manual and a blueprint to come out? Why am I being lazy? Why don't I just go ahead and be free? Why don't I go ahead and just do what it takes? Because there's an anointing on my life. And God's wanting to use me. But he cannot use me in the state of mind I'm in right now. Why? You know the word. Get it to work. Come on. The Bible says work out your soul. Salvation means it'll work if you work it. Come on. You have to work the scriptures. You have to do what it takes. You have to do it. He already gave you everything you're supposed to do. We've been lazy in the area. Of what God's called us to. This is not a season to be lazy. This is not a season to be cold. You lukewarm. He'll spew you out. This is not a season to put down your mantle and your ministry. This is not a season to give up. But it's a season of being strong. Because there's souls in your loins that God needs you to reach. Come on. 
you get yourself set free. Then you have a blueprint for someone else to be free. But you can't free nobody else until you are totally free yourself. Come on. We cannot free nobody else unless we are free ourselves. That means that we're not free. That we can't reach those souls that God has set for us. Oh, my God. I don't know my side. What are we waiting for? Repent and ask God to renew you. Ask God to change you. And ask God to do something down on the inside. I don't know what you're, if you have a stronghold and what your stronghold is. But this is the reason why you're not growing. This is the reason why God is not manifesting his glory down on the inside. He told us to present our body. He told us to do it as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. What is our reasonable service? Then he told us not to be transformed to this world because he knew that's what the devil was going to try to do. God got every scripture in here that's going to help us get to the place that he called us to. We got to use the word. And that's why I tell everybody, stop doing whatever. You just stop. Stop. Because everything we do, not every, <laughs> if it's not growing you, that means it's hindering you. <laughs> if it's not growing you, it's hindering you. Come on, y'all write that down. If it's not growing you, it's hindering you. You got to tell yourself, what, what am I doing? What am I constantly doing to keep me from growing? And this goes to the scriptures where he said, examine yourself to see if you're still in the faith. Examine. Come on, y'all, we scared to examine ourselves. We scared of what it's going to look like. But don't be afraid. All it's going to do is help you. You may be shocked at what you find out. Pastor, well, you know, why am I not growing? You, you will know why you're not growing. Come on. Come on. God will reveal if you really, some, some of us don't even pray and ask God because we're scared to find out what God is, you know, what he's going to say. But don't be afraid. Come on. God loves us. Oh, my God. With everything down on the inside. He loves us. He will never give up on us. We give up on him, but he will never give up on us. Come on, y'all. Let's get let's get to the place God has called to called us to be. Put everything aside. Ain't nothing more important than God right now. This is a season of letting everything go. Come on, in, in a name, uh, it, it, oh, in a name, so many things. I mean, from food to to anything you're doing too much of. Come on. We think we got control. Oh yeah, I got control. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, you know. We got all our excuses why we do what we do. But the Holy Spirit is waiting patient for us to say, I need you to give this up. It's become an idol to you. Anything you can't give up, anything you can't give to God, it is a stronghold. It is an addiction. It is an idol that's in your life. And I'd rather to kill, you know, when the, on Moses' day, what, what God did, when they, boy, God was tough on them. And, and, and uh, <laughs> whoo. God was tough on the Israelites. He was very tough when he started worshiping idols, when they started complaining and murmuring. Man, he was tough on them. I thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ because some of us would be, <laughs> would be swallowed up. <laughs> oh, my God, my God. I'm telling you, I love the Lord with all my heart. And I don't want nothing to stand in the way with what God wants to do down on the inside. I know God's calling my name. You get to say the same thing. I know God's calling me at such a time as this. Why am I going to allow the devil to, to cause me to miss out on my season and my time? God wants to manifest his glory down on the inside of us. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Is that worth losing your, oh my God. Is that worth losing your anointing? Is it worth losing your mantle? Is it worth that God has to skip you and go to somebody else because you're not ready? Is it worth it? Come on. Is it worth, come on, come on, soothing your soul, soothing your flesh. Is it worth it? You need to write down and talk to yourself and tell yourself, is this worth it? I'm just going to throw it away. I'm just going to go cold turkey. I'm just going to stop doing it. I'm just going to not go to that club no more. I'm not going to. Uh, come on, some of us sneak going to clubs. Come on, come on. You'd be amazed how many church folks in clubs. You'd be amazed. I'm going to close that door. I know when Friday night comes and I hear some music come, I know my flesh is 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 wanting to go and want to do what it normally do. But I'm, I'm going to sing a new song. 
I'm going to sing a new melody. Every time I feel that unction, that crave, I'm going to quote the, come on, I'm going to meditate on the word. I'm going to just meditate on the word. I'm going to meditate. Come on, come on. I'm, I, I got a scripture. You, by the time you're done, you should have a whole bunch of scriptures by heart. You should know them by heart. <laughs> These are the scriptures that I use. Come on. God is here to deliver you right now. Come on, just lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we cover you, our spirits, our soul, our body. We, we cover it right now in the name of Jesus. From the crown of our head to the very sole of our feet, God. That we've been healed from strongholds. That the, the devil has to grip us and, and he's holding us. Come on, come on, bounding us, God. I thank you that we're loose in the spirit. That we lose to manifest your glory, God. That we lose our minds are being renewed by the washing of the word. I thank you for a seek that's down in our bellies like never before, God. That we're gonna take this 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 mantle or this this call on our life serious, God. That we're gonna allow you to use us like never before, God. That we're not letting nothing separate us from the love of God. That we're not being, oh my God, transformed to this world. We're not allowing the world to take us over, God. But we're being renewed by your power, by your strength, and by the word, God. We thank you right now, God, that you are down on the inside of us. And you're wooing us, God, because you want us to spend time with you, God. I thank you that a prayer will turn, as my mom would say, down in my spirit. I thank you that when it's time to pray, then I'm excited about prayer. I thank you that you're giving me my excitement back that I've lost years ago, God. I thank you, God, that you're giving my the word. I mean, I used to pray for the word. Come on, God, I'm, I'm thank you that you're giving that back, God. I'm thank you that you show me what to do, God. Because, oh, God, the best is yet to come. You're about to use us like never before. That we are not allowing Satan, God. To defeat us, God, and what you're telling us to do, God. So we tell him he's a liar, that he has to get behind us. And we command him so in the name of Jesus that we are delivered and set free. And that we are made whole in every area of our life. Our mind is being renewed by the washing of your word. That we are being changed for real, God, down in our spirits. That it ain't no one month or just two months, but it's the rest of our life. Thank you, God, that we manifest in your glory in this earth. We're signs and wonders and miracles. And just because we love you with all our hearts, that you can use us. If you want to find somebody to use, Father, you can use me. So we thank you that our atmosphere and our frequency is clear. And that we hear your voice like we never heard before. And we hear it so clear. Our eyes are open that we're seeing, God. And we're not blinded. And the devil is not blinding us, God. That we see so clear in the end of the Messiah. That the Spirit of the Lord is moving down on the inside of us, God. And that we're closing the doors to the enemy right now, Father. That we're feeding our spirits daily. Messiah. So when the devil come in like a flood, you say your lip are standard. That that standard is being lifted up. It's guarding our hearts and it's guarding our minds and it's guarding our spirit. That you said all excuses were nailed to the cross. That we won't have no excuses on why we where we are or why we doing what we're doing. I cover our coping mechanism. I tell the devil he's a liar. All of us, that God will rise up. Oh, oh, come on, down on the inside of us. I thank you in the name of Jesus. We curse depression. We curse it from the root in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that we are free, that we will not be defeated by the enemy. That all the idols in our life are being cast down, knocked down, burned down. Every idol in our life is being removed now in Jesus' name. Now tell yourself you've been set free. Tell yourself you're being changed. Tell yourself you're an overcomer. Tell yourself that you are not going to be like this. Come on. Tell yourself that every stronghold is being broken today. Today is my day of freedom. Today is my day of transformation. Today is my day. My process is moving forward. 
I am moving forward because there's something that God has put on the inside of me before the foundation of the world. Woo. Come on, come on. Just give him praise. Just, just give him praise. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Come on, let's just worship. Come on, let's just worship. Father, I intercept the enemy right now. That when we get off this live, that it just be a good word. And we'll go on by our, our, our business and we're like, oh, wow, that was a good word. Okay, I guess that was somebody else. I thank God that we know that word was for us. Yeah, that, that, that my son. We're not, we not pushing up on somebody else. But God is doing something down on the inside. And he's getting all that stuff out. He's getting all that stuff that's been standing in your way. He's freeing you right now. Just receive it. Just receive your freedom. Don't go back to that mess. Don't go back to, come on. No, 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 no. I was watching my, you know, when the scripture talk about, the, about we go back and eat our vomit that we don't, you know, that scripture, I hate to say it. Anyway, my dog threw up the other day, and guess what? He went back and ate every bit of it, and it reminded me of that scripture said that once God, I'm going to paraphrase, once God deliver us, and we done vomit all that stuff out, and we go back and, and eat our vomit. Woo! We go back. Wow, and then I look back, all the vomit was gone. I was like, dog, don't do that. But that's what dogs do. <laughs> and that's what we do. We probably said, oh, that's net. That's what we do. Come on. Oh, we get free, and then we we we, we dance around the, the 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 what we got free from, and all of a sudden we're back in the same situation again. We're just just eating the vomit that we oh I can't even say it is so nasty. Anyway. I love everybody. I pray that this was something. <laughs> I pray. I feel anointed in here, y'all. Oh my, oh my God. I can just lay before God, right? I hope you feel the anointing of God. I don't want this to be just a, um, I don't want this to be a word. I want it to be powerful. I want it to, to to deliver my whole purpose that God has me on here is for your deliverance and our deliverance. We all del be delivered and set free. Know that you have a oh spirit, a soul, and I like the way he, uh, this this guy put on here uh, that your body is just a earthly suit, <laughs> but we are more spirit than anything. But our soul tries to fight against our spirit and whichever one you feed that's the one that's going to win whatever one you feed that's the one that's going to win so what you gonna do now I'm gonna spend hours in prayer I'm gonna spend hours in the word right now I'm not gonna do nothing else right now because I, I don't have no control I have no self-control right now so if I don't have no sense of growth let me just leave everything alone I can't decide okay I'm gonna eat one little piece of chocolate oh, my mom did that my mom uh, loved chocolate a lot the world's finest chocolate so she's about like four or five bars and she would put in the freezer and she knew that she had no control because she'll eat all that chocolate up I watched my mom just cut a, sometimes a block, you know, you had the blocks of chocolate, and sometimes she cut a half, and every day she did one little half, because she knew that if she didn't do that, now that's some self-control. She knew that chocolate was her enemy. <laughs> she didn't stop, but I watched her cut a piece of chocolate, and she'll put it in her mouth, and she would just eat it, and just like, like, oh, and like, it was like, Okay, that's my chocolate for the day. I'm okay. But most of us don't have that, uh, that kind of, uh, oh, my God. Most of us, we can't resist it. We don't have that, that, uh, that <laughs> we're not strong enough to deal with it. Chocolate cake on the table, you know, and it's calling your name. Most of us can't do that. Come on. So I would feel, don't make the chocolate cake. Don't buy the chocolate. We're just using chocolate right now. Just don't do it. Just just snitch on the enemy so somebody keep you accountable so you can't do it. Like, listen, y'all, there's a chocolate cake. I'm, I, I'm thinking about buying, I'm thinking about making it, but could you make sure I don't do it? <laughs> anyway, I love everybody. Yes, Teresa, self-control. Oh, my God. You're controlling yourself. 
You got to control yourself. Because if you don't control yourself, guess what? The enemy is going to try to control you. Okay, let me. I love everybody. I love everybody. And um, please, 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 do what it takes. Do everything it takes. Don't give up. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Miss Harper. Don't give up. Come on. Come on, y'all. Let's grow. Let's grow. Don't forget the class is set. God, it is actually this coming. Is this coming Tuesday? Oh, my God. Is this coming Tuesday? Now, everybody doesn't have to come to the building if they don't want to. We have everybody wearing masks at the building. And we have the chairs situated. It's not the round tables anymore. And it's situated six feet apart. Well, close, you know. They're, they're situated. And you can come with your mask. And, um... We'll have, um, what's some things called? Where you can write on, uh, I'm looking at them right now, I can't think. A uh, clipboards uh, that you can write on. So, but if not, we'll be on live and we, we're, we're thinking about working the um, Zoom uh, for those who want to be on live real time. So we could be trying to work everything out where we can all, so if you, if you don't want to come, if you can try to come, please come because there's nothing like being in the atmosphere. And uh, we probably going to pray for about 10 minutes. We're going to straight into the class. And then we're going to have deliverance service every night. So if anything that you're dealing with and you want to be free of, I mean every Tuesday night, that you want to be free of, come on, we're going to discuss some things. And we, we're going to be uh, more than preaching. We're going to be discussing. And we're going to have uh, class participation so we can make sure that we understand what we're going through what we're dealing with the first two classes is we're gonna not even gonna start the lesson first on the first two classes we're just gonna talk about uh, what deliverance is and and why are we here and what is our purpose of wanting to understand deliverance so please don't miss it is this coming Tuesday is an it and came around real fast but uh, we're just praying that God's power and his anointing will be in the atmosphere uh, because we need to get past and do what God's called us to do. Come on. And the devil don't want us to do it, but we're going to do it anyway. Because he has nothing to say or nothing to do about it. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting off. I love everybody. And I will see you all Friday. Amen.